Welcome to the South Bronx Culture Trail Festival, an annual event highlighting our rich and diverse history through community arts, culture, and education. Brought to you by Casita Maria, Center for Arts and Education, and Council Member Rafael Salamanca, Jr. I'm your host, Tina Valentin, and I'd like to invite you to join us in your home virtually throughout the entire month of June as we celebrate our roots and express ourselves through the art of music, dance, puppetry, culinary, and wellness practices of the South Bronx. To be part of the exploration, be sure to visit casitamaria.org for the entire South Bronx Culture Trail Festival virtual schedule. We look forward to being with you. Today, we're going to meet artist Antoinette Lignini. Antoinette Legmini is an Italian-American artist born and raised in the Bronx who graduated from Fordham University in 2016 with a BA in Visual Arts and Women's Studies. Legmini's main body of work is comprised of mixed media collage portraits and she's best known for her collaborative community art project called Bronx Faces. Uh, hello, Antoinette Legmini. Talk to us about why you created Portraits of Bronx Sites. So Bronx Faces started uh, because I wanted to learn more about my home borough through my community, through my friends, my family, and folks that I've lived next to forever, but I've never met before. So I wanted to learn more about the Bronx through different community members from all across. Different from their areas. perspective, right, and their yeah. experience. That's so awesome. And so how did you connect to everyone in the Bronx? So it started with just a few friends. Uh, it started with Fru, it started with uh, some people uh, on my Instagram. So I put out this open call with these questions online, uh, just on my Instagram and on my Facebook at first. So uh, it started with like my small group of friends and then that group of friends told a couple of other people and then it just kind of took over on Instagram. And I, like between people finding it on the Explore page through word of mouth from a friend just telling someone else over lunch, uh, I got all of these submissions and essentially anyone who applied to Bronx Faces got in. I didn't want to keep the project from anyone. Uh, I didn't want to say, well, you're allowed, but you're not. I thought that the whole point of this was to include everyone and to include as many responses and perspectives as I can and to not edit anyone's responses, to kind of let people speak their truth and give me their stories like with an unfiltered tongue to be able to document your own history your own way. That's so interesting. So you're saying that it kind of evolved organically from this place of people just telling and referencing or referring other people and and it kind of developed the Bronx faces it developed its own community. Yeah, weirdly enough, you know, and the coolest part um, is when I would have like an exhibition, people would like just kind of meet and be like, oh my God, wait, I didn't know that you knew this person. Or I would see a visitor reading a participant's story and say, oh my God, like I remember that from when I was a kid or two people bonded over something. So it's really cool how interwoven we all are without even realizing it. I didn't really have to say, okay, now I need five participants from Mott Haven. Now I need a few people from uh, Riverdale, like whatever it is. Um, it just naturally happened that it was very diverse, thankfully. So I understand you have a few participants here and uh, that are part of the project. Um, if you'd like to introduce them and also share a little bit why, uh, as to why you chose these individuals. I know we already discussed that this one told that one and this one, but I, I know that you're part of the importance of your project is that you're also capturing each person's story. So are you specifically choosing various areas of the Bronx so that you're capturing the entire Bronx or is it just still by word of mouth? So it just kind of naturally happened that I got a very diverse group of people um, from very different neighborhoods. So. It just, I was lucky that it worked out that way. And also in, in occupation too, right? Because you're, you're about to introduce Josh Ramos, or Ramos, I don't know, some people, you know, in Latinas, Ramos, and in English is Ramos. 
So uh, he's a, a writer and a, an educator. So um, I know he's going to speak a little bit, but I'd like you to share a few words about him. Josh is amazing. Josh is such a dope person. I've known Josh for years, actually. He's also a Fordham alum. He's been working hard on you know, doing his own like DIY shows. He's been a writer. And I just appreciate him for all that he does. And he's just, Josh does it all. I think it's so dope that, you know, Bronx Faces just is like highlighting more people. You know, we, we hype up a lot of like celebrities and stuff and like J-Lo and like Jenny from the block, you know, like the everyday person is just as dope. You know, the person that, you know, has to, wants to talk about pizza and some of her. And I think that Annie's really putting on for the Bronx in a way that probably the best visual artist I know that's really highlighting Bronx centric things. Thank you guys for being here with us. Hope you guys stay tuned. We've got a lot coming to you on our Casita Granaria South Bronx Culture Trails for the entire month of June. So stay tuned.